Hey everyone, Amtrak Guy365 here, and today on this remade edition of Engines of Amtrak, I'll be rediscussing the EMD AEM7. This is a remake of the original episode you can still watch as of the making of this video. The late 1970s saw Amtrak struggling to find a permanent electric locomotive to replace the old 1930s era GG1s, serviceable at best Metroliner EMUs, and rough riding E60s. In other words, the railroad basically needed to replace everything electric and start from scratch. With that said, in 1975, Amtrak consulted the Railroad Innovative Europe for answers. Help arrived in the form of the Swedish-built RC4 No. 1166 and French-built Class CC 21000 numbered CC 21003. The RC4, part of the RC line of engines, was first built in 1975 as a mixed traffic engine, while the CC21000 was first built in 1969 for express passenger trains, reaching speeds of 135 miles per hour. The RC4 arrived first in August 1976, and the CC21000 in January 1977. These locomotives were given American modifications like a bell, cab signals, American style couplings, painted into Amtrak colors, and given new designations. The RC4, or X995, was nicknamed Swedish Meatball, and the CC21000, or X996, was the French Fry. They performed trial runs with test and revenue trains up to 125 miles per hour in the Northeast Corridor between 1976 and 77. While X995 was able to prove its worth matching Amtrak's timetables with relative ease, handled cold weather well, and riding the rails adequately, X996 was another story. When it was put into service under the same conditions as the RC4, Amtrak was not pleased with the results. X996 had panograph contact issues, rode roughly, and American personnel claimed it was the locomotive's stiff suspension and truck design. French personnel, on the other hand, stated the locomotive itself was fine, but it was the shoddy American track condition that was the issue, a common trend on American railroads of the time. Both countries were correct in their own ways. American tracks were not kept up to the same degree of quality as those in France, thus the suspension system built for French standards would not work well with American standards. After tests concluded, X995 was sent back to Sweden in May 1977. X996, after its six-month lease was terminated early and ran only one revenue train, went back to France in June, leaving Sweden as the winner. Amtrak would then place an order in September 1977 for 30 new electric locomotives based on the RC4 at a cost of $77.8 million. This contract was awarded to Electromotive Division in Asia, with the Bud Company manufacturing the car bodies. Later in February 1980, Amtrak ordered an additional 17, bringing the total to 47 units. These units would become known as the AEM-7. The name stemming from AEM combining the initials of Builders EMD and ASIA and 7 for 7,000 horsepower. They were rated for a top speed of 125 miles per hour, produced 7,000 horsepower, and weighed in at 202,000 pounds. The locomotives had a length of 51 feet 1 inch, a width of 10 feet 2 inches, and a height of 14 feet 9.5 inches. They came equipped with Nathan K5LA air horns. Here's a few samples. Testing began in early 1980 with number 900, and revenue service began May 9, 1980 with number 901 leading a Metroliner service out of Washington, D.C. But upon introduction, the AEM-7 was quite small compared to its older counterparts. It was half the weight of the GG-1 and E-60, and 20 to 28 feet shorter than those locomotives as well. It was deemed the smallest and lightest high horsepower locomotive in North America. Despite that, the meatballs, or toasters as they had been affectionately nicknamed, could hustle 8 to 10 head end power equipped Amfleet passenger cars with ease. They rode smoothly, were lightweight and reliable, and actually built for passenger service. The locomotives were able to handle a wide range of northeastern passenger trains. Of course, this carrier doesn't fly through the air to Washington. Oh, boy! It flies along the ground. Metroliner service. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. With the arrival of these units, this allowed Amtrak to finally retire their old GG1s on May 1st, 1981. Though, the AEM7s were deemed quite revolutionary, much like the GG1s. Car and Locomotive Cyclopedia stated, 
Not since the introduction of the New York Central's J-Class Hudson steam locomotives in 1927 has a new locomotive model had such an impact on speeds and schedule upgrades. Amtrak's initial order was completed by summer 1982, with the fleet being numbered 900 to 942. In that time, AEM-7s and AM fleets had also replaced the increasingly unreliable Bud Metroliner sets. The toaster units even found themselves towing broken down Metroliner sets on the Keystone Corridor in the mid to late 1980s. In 1987, after being pleased with the reliable service, Amtrak ordered seven more AEM-7s, with all of those being delivered by December 1988. Amtrak now had a fleet of 54 toasters numbered 900 to 953. However, on January 4, 1987, locomotives 900 and 903 would be involved in a serious head-on collision with two Conrail engines at Chase, Maryland. The Conrail crew had been smoking marijuana cigarettes and failed to call out signals, thus leading them onto the main line. Amtrak number 94, the Colonial, ran into the Conrail engines at 108 miles per hour. Of the 660 passengers, 164 were injured, 14 died, including an Amtrak engineer and lounge car attendant. Both Amtrak locomotives were also destroyed. Meanwhile, on a more positive note, Maryland Area Rail Commuter, or MARC, and the Southeastern Pennsylvania Transportation Authority, or SEPTA, also ordered their own AEM-7s in 1986 and 87 respectively. New Jersey Transit received 33 ALP-44s between 1989 and 97 based on the RC-6 and AEM-7. By the end of the 1990s, the AEM-7s had seen themselves painted into Phase 3 and more recently, 4. Even with shiny new paint though, a refurbishment was in order to extend the locomotive's successful career. Between 1999 and 2002, Amtrak and Alstom cooperated in a remanufacturing program for 29 units. Alstom provided the AC propulsion equipment, electrical cabinets, transformers, head-end power, and cab displays. Their attractive effort and overall performance would be improved as well with longer trains. Alstom oversaw the operations at Amtrak's Wilmington, Delaware shops. This also coincided with Amtrak's rebranding in 2000, and were repainted into the new Phase 5, soon getting the new Travel Mark logo. These refurbished AEM-7s were classified as AEM-7AC. Not long after in 2003, Amtrak would retire their E-60 locomotives, leaving the toasters as the primary workhorse on the Northeast Corridor, working alongside the recently introduced HHPA in High Speed Acela Express. The ever so popular and reliable toasters would then continue shuttling mail and passengers up and down the NEC for the remainders of the 2000s and much of the 2010s. Though, after 30 years of service by 2010, the toasters were due to be replaced at some point. Amtrak placed an order for 70 Siemens ACS-64 locomotives to replace their fleet of AEM-7s and HHP-8s. ACS-64 revenue service began February 7, 2014. Amtrak would begin retiring, scrapping, and recycling their AEM-7s, with number 942 and 946 being the last remaining units. On June 18, 2016, a farewell excursion train ran between Washington, D.C. and Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Stops were made for photos, and a tour of Amtrak's Wilmington shops was offered, too. Afterwards, the 36-year career of Amtrak's AEM-7s would be officially penned for the history books. Post-retirement, 915 would be sent to the Railroad Museum of Pennsylvania in Strasburg in summer 2015. 942 and 928 would be sent to the Transportation Technology Center in Pueblo, Colorado in July 2017. The Illinois Railway Museum would receive 945 in March 2018, and Caltrain would receive number 929 and 938 in June 2019 to test their new overhead electric system in preparation for their EMU sets. Any other Amtrak AEM-7 has either been destroyed in an incident, stored, or scrapped. Other railroads like New Jersey Transit retired their units in 2012, many of which are still in storage looking quite rough. Mark retired their units in April 2017, and SEPTA in December 2018. SEPTA, however, does still roster a few AEM-7s and a single ALP-44 for use on nightly fall wash trains, cleaning the rails of leaves and oily residue.
But what about the European units that started it all? CC-21003 became CC-6577, was withdrawn from service in 2005, and eventually scrapped. RC-4 number 1166, the basis of the AEM-7, remains in service with green cargo as of the making of this video. 1166 gained a plaque acknowledging its time in America, but apparently it was stolen. Amtrak's AEM-7s were just what the railroad needed to provide fast and reliable service to the Northeast Corridor. They were an iconic symbol of the Northeast, and revitalized the Corridor's train service with their quaint, boxy design paired with a rake of Amfleet coaches. Even if Amtrak no longer rosters the toasters, a few have been preserved for all to see, and they'll still continue serving in limited service elsewhere, for however long that may be. The AEM-7 definitely left its mark on the history book of Amtrak, the National Railroad Passenger Corporation. But you know what they say about toasters, right? You know what they say, all toasters, toast, toast. Thanks for watching this remade edition of Engines of Amtrak. Like I mentioned at the start, you can still go watch the original episode as of the making of this one. Thanks to those who sent in pictures and videos to be used in this episode as well. Stay tuned for next time where I'll rediscuss the GE P32-8 VWH. Thank you again for watching.